Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day God has prepared for us once again here at Hayshire UCC. It is great to gather with you all in worship this morning, and we welcome our folks who are joining us via Zoom today. So our candle will be lit in just a moment as a reminder of Christ's presence among us. And we remember that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And today we come together here in our beautiful sanctuary in person and through video and phone from all corners of our area into one body of Christ. And whenever we do come together as the family and friends of Hayshire, we always hope that this is a time and a place to rest and to encounter God within our midst. A couple of announcements I have, and then we'll check on everybody else. It, let's see here. So June 21st, which is coming up really fast, is the longest day. And it is the longest day because we have the most sunlight hours throughout that day. And Good News Consulting, the folks that help us with our Dementia Friends projects and programming, has an all-day session of various different courses that you can take and they are available via Zoom free, or you can pop into their office and participate in person. And so the poster of those events is out on our bulletin board for uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. So you can check in on that, but they have stuff going on from 8 a.m. until at least 5 p.m. And there's a lot of other things happening around the community um, that the Alzheimer's Association is doing about the longest day. So check it out and see if there's something that might speak to you because there's a little bit of something for everybody here. Some good information. Speaking of dementia and Alzheimer's, we just finished our CPC program and I thought that was an excellent programming. They're hoping to bring back some more sessions in a couple of months. So we will let you know when they become available again. And I've offered Hayshire up as their location to hold the sessions again. So, you know, that just makes it easier for us to participate. But uh, it also brings folks from the community here into our um, building as well. So looking forward to having that back in a few months, probably in the fall sometime. Remember, yoga is happening on Thursday evenings at 6. And it is open to everybody from beginner level how do I even do yoga through advanced? And Lydia will help you with those modifications depending on where you are. So please don't let the fact that you've never done yoga before stop you from coming and checking it out. She would be happy to help you. And as always in the back of your bulletin, I think page seven, you'll see what the calendar of what's happening this week and other announcements that are there. So I think Mr. Glenn said he had an announcement for us today. Just to follow up on an announcement I made last uh, Sunday um, in reference to um, an event called Servants Summer Work Camp at uh, Starview UCC in Mount Wolf. Uh, we're encouraging, the, the York Association is encouraging churches to participate with Mount, uh, with Starview in reference to this camp, work camp. So what they need, I talked to um, Joanne Krieger about this. They need donations of food, donations of for monetary donations to support this camp. It's a one week camp. Um, it's mostly for kids, although you can, you can also volunteer as a, an adult to lead the group if you would, would be interested on that. Um, basically what they do is they do um, work for people who don't, who can't uh, afford uh, construction projects around their home, putting in ramps, putting in, maybe putting in windows, maybe putting in a new patio, doing some painting, that kind of thing. It's kind of light work that kids can do. And I know from the past, Servants has done an excellent job in terms of leading these groups. And so we want to help, um, help star you in terms of making a, a, a successful event for them. So I have posted up on the bulletin board all the information about that, what the link is for the website. If you're interested in volunteering yourself, 
And I also put down there a list of the items or the things that they're gonna be having for dinner. They're gonna basically have a breakfast in the morning and then a dinner in the evening and they're gonna pack lunches for people uh, for, for lunch to take with them during the day. So they do need help with that. They've been doing this, actually Starview has been doing the thing for 20 years. I was amazed to hear that. So it's been very successful for them. But as many churches, a lot of their members are getting older. They need some help in terms of making this, again, a success for them. So I thought we, would, we could easily do that mm -hmm. in the UCC. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate you looking into that for us. Other announcements, joys, or concerns folks would like to share? Let's go to Charlie, and then I'll come back to Miss Sally. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you guys to keep uh, a colleague of mine in his prayers. His name is Sean. Um, his wife passed away unexpectedly last week. Uh, she was 32 years old. She leaves a three-week-old and a three-year-old at home. So he just any positive vibes or positive thoughts you could keep as he's trying to deal with being a single dad and having two really young kids. So keep him in your prayers. Thank you, Charlie. I did see that online, so I appreciate you lifting that up. Our prayers definitely are with Sean and his family. Other announcements, Miss Sally had one. All right, so a reminder to visit our garden and to talk to it and say a prayer over it. Uh, we've got veggies coming up. Their tomatoes are growing on the vine and I understand they're green right now. I've been told that they will then turn yellow, orange, and then finally red for us to eat. Excuse me, my microphone is having issues today. I was hoping it would behave if I left it still but that does not seem to be the case. So we're not gonna use it. All right, so visit our garden, check out all the veggies, say a prayer over it, maybe water it a little bit, pick a couple of weeds, and also check out the pollinator garden. It's doing really well too, and it is beautiful. So thank you, Miss Sally, for keeping us up to date on what's happening. There'll be more information in our halo. You'll get to see a few pictures of how our garden is growing. So we appreciate that. Other announcements, joys, or concerns to lift up. Okay. Today is Father's Day, and out there on the table is a small card that has a big word joy on the front of it. It has a beautiful scene of a waterfall. There is a poem on the back that Dawn pulled and put together for all of the guys in our sanctuary, our congregation and you know just a little reminder of how to bring a little joy into your life here as we enter into Father's Day and beyond. In your bulletin you should have a handout that is a Father's Day litany and if you will share that with me this morning. Today we pray for fathers everywhere who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For the fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers who mourn. For men who may or may not have children of their own, but act like a father to someone in need of advice, support, nurturing, and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our father figures, for stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Holy God, hear this prayer for stepfathers. For adoptive fathers who have heard the call of God to lovingly step forward for those that need their care. Holy God, 
hear this prayer for adoptive fathers, for fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families. Holy God, have mercy on absentee fathers. For fathers who struggle with temptation, <clears throat> excuse me, violence or addiction, for those who do harm and for those whom they have harmed. Holy God, have mercy on fathers that struggle. For new fathers full of hope and for longtime fathers full of wisdom, for the fathers yet to be and the fathers soon to be. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of your church. For those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Holy God, hear this prayer for the fathers of our faith. Loving God, parent of us all, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless all men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, as we enter into this time of worship together, remember that no matter who you are, where you have come from over the past week or where you're headed in the week to come. For the next 50 minutes or so, you are home. So let us prepare our hearts and souls for worship this morning. Will all those who are able please rise and join me? Peace be with you. And also be with you. Come and see the love God has given us. Come and see what it means to be children of God. Come with this hope that Christ's presence is real 
With joy we come to see the Lord. The mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we doubt the Spirit's power to overcome death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son, reveals that nothing is impossible with God. Let us confess our sin and receive new life. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we confess that we do not know how to look for you. We do not sense your nearness, and if there are angels among us, we are unaware. We do not show the hospitality to strangers that Abraham showed to you. We do not trust that our hardships can be transformed by your spirit. O covenant keeper, forgive us. Let us laugh with joy because your grace has made peace among us. Send us out with good news so that others will receive your blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
through Christ's death and resurrection, we have been given new life, trust in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Okay. Have a seat, buddy. Have a seat. Sit down. Please sit down. So today, I want to talk to you about promises. Do you know what a promise is, Emma? Or Emmy? What's a promise? When somebody makes a promise, what does that mean? Okay, so when somebody makes a promise, that means they can't break what they say. They need to do what they say, right? Or do their best to do what they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, sometimes that happens. Sometimes promises get broken. What? You did? Yeah. That does happen. It happens that we break plates once in a while. Mm -hmm. So today, I want to... Yes. Yeah, it, it wasn't hard? Yeah, it's just soft now. I break it now. It's in um, people over this way. Uh-oh. And now it's in half? Yeah. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Mommy is. Well, let's talk about promises that God makes to us. What's that? What's that? That says God, God's promises. You want to hold that? You can hold that. So some of the promises that God makes to us is, is that God is always going to be faithful to us. Okay? Always going to be with us. God will give you comfort. So when you're scared, you can talk to God and God can give you some comfort. Okay? God will give you help. How can God give us help? God gives us other people that can help us. So when we need help, well, it's close. It's an M. It's an M. If you turn that M upside down, it would be row. You're right. Yep. That is part of your name. Yep. So God can help us, right? So who are some people that help us? Who are people that help us? So family members help? That's right. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters can help us. Family members help. What about firefighters? Can firefighters help us? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And my mom helped me fight a fighter at my mom's house. Oh my goodness. Medium. Just a medium one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. So other people that help us, you mentioned doctors. Okay. All right. So God can keep us safe. So God keeps his promises. God, just a second. God is one of those people that when God promises something, it happens. The only thing is that sometimes it doesn't happen as quick as we would like it to, but it happens. And here's another promise that God says. God says, I will never, ever leave you. I'll be with you always. That's kind of cool, huh? Absolutely. You can definitely hold this one. You know what that says? It says, God will love you forever. Isn't that cool? No matter what you do, God will always love you. Yeah. All right. Let's do a quick prayer. Okay. God, thank you for your promises and for coming to us through Jesus. It's okay. He can hold on to it. Thank you. Thank you for your promises and for coming to us in Jesus so that we would get to know you a little bit better. 
Thank you for sending other people into our world, whether it is moms and dads or deities, whether it's aunts and uncles and grandparents, whether it's church friends or other friends. We thank you for those people that come into our world that help us feel your love, that help us feel your comfort, and that will just plain help us when we need it. We ask your blessing upon these children, their parents, and each of us as we get to learn and grow together. In your glorious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up and helping me this morning. I appreciate it. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. God of redemption, summon us to Sarah's joy and Abraham's wonder through the word and work of your divine spirit. In your glorious name we pray, amen. Uh, our reading from the Hebrew canon today is from Genesis 18, 1 to 15, and 21, 1 to 7. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf 
tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that they had prepared, he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I've grown old and my husband is old, shall I be fruitful? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah, and he, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham and Sarah, to Abraham, that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. How patient are you? While patience is a virtue, we've often said that patience is not something most of us are very good at. If we were to use a scale of one to five to measure your patience level, one being very little or no patience, three being moderate, comfortable with waiting for a while, and five being I can wait for as long as it takes, doesn't matter how long. Where would you fall? How many people are closer to one? How many people are closer to three? Ooh, nice. How many people are fives? <laughs> well, twos are between one and three. So where, since you think, since you say you're a two, Dick, are you closer to a one or a three? Probably a one lately. Lisa says she's a 4.5. So I found that most people's patience tends to run out quickly at times, but I think a lot of that depends on the specific situation. And it's refreshing for me to have you to see you all say that the majority of you are really comfortable with waiting because before we've talked about patience and you're like, don't have any, don't even know what that word is. So Sometimes it depends on how everything else is going in our lives too. It's easier to be patient when we aren't stressed about other things and life seems to be going really well. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I also find that it is often easier to be patient when we get distracted by doing other things. So it's easy to take our mind off of it and we're not thinking about it, but that isn't always possible, is it? Even though we have other things to do, we can't always get as distracted as we might like to let time go by. 
For those of you who tend to be very patient or moderately patient, how long can you wait for what seems to be an average time that you feel is appropriate to wait? Okay, so give me an example. We know for a baby, it takes nine months. So we can wait nine months. For a doctor, it can take three months. So whether we wanna wait or not, we have to. Yep. Don't like to wait more than 20 minutes for a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Used to be in, in college days, if the professor didn't show up within 15 minutes, we were done, right? Yep. So can you imagine waiting 24 to 25 years for something that has been promised to you and you want it above everything else in your life? Can you imagine waiting that long? No, that, that one is a little bit harder. But that's what Abraham and Sarah did or had to do. Last Sunday, we read part of Abraham, Abram and Sarai's call story in Genesis 12.1. Uh, remember, their original names were Abram and Sarai, and later God changes them throughout their journey to these fulfilled promise to Abraham and Sarah, as we more commonly know them. When Abram was 75 years old, he heard God's call to just grab what you can and go. Go until I tell you to stop. Remember, we talked about that last week. He gathered up his closest family members, some animals, a few supplies, and they just took off. And they walked and they walked and they walked. Well, I know you're thinking that at 75 for Abram and Sarah was 10 years younger, at 65 for her, moving across country and starting over is not at the top of the list of things you want to do unless you know that you're going to a specific location and that you're not gonna be moving again. Am I right? It's just not something that we plan at that age. So back then though, Liz Curtis Higgs tells us that back then 75 was like the new 40. She said the lifespan of a patriarch was nearly double our own. Not sure why, whether it was just the way calendars went or Maybe they live longer back then. I guess stress has caught up with us if that's the case. But with that in mind, 75 being the new 40, it seems a bit more feasible. People make big moves all the time in their 30s and 40s for work and family, and it's no big deal. Either way, it just doesn't seem like God had to work too hard to get Abram and Sarai to leave the, for parts unknown. At least that's what the story leads us to believe. But God does drop a little bit of enticement into the equation. Remember, he said back then, God tells Abraham, if you do go, I'll make you the father to a great nation. If you do go, your name will be great and you will be a blessing to others. This is a golden promise to a couple who have been married for so many years and have longed for a child of their own and have been unable to conceive. So can you imagine being told, don't worry, you're going to have a huge family. So just be patient. It will happen. So that's good. And, you know, it's like, wow, that's great news golden promise. For Sarai, though, there was more at stake than just longing to have a child. 4,000 years ago, barrenness for a woman was the ultimate disgrace and understood to be a sign of divine disfavor. So a barren woman suffered not only the lack of her own self-esteem, but also from a threat of divorce, Higgins shares. Talk about adding insult to injury. She would be ridiculed by others, believed to be shunned by God, and considered disposable by her husband. Lucky for Sarai, Abram remained devoted and faithful to her over all the years of their marriage. 
Oh, the conversation and the plans that they must have shared as they traveled and sat around the campfires looking at the stars each evening. Can you imagine after all of that time? I can imagine that their giddiness was contagious at first. Everybody was all excited about the big changes that were coming. But over the years, their hopes and dreams seemed to wane into frustration, heartache, and most likely even anger and depression for Sarai. We all have heard, we all have had experiences with hopes and dreams that were unfulfilled and the promises that were made to us, but never came to fruition. We have even prayed and not had our prayers answered, or at least not in the time frame that we wanted, or even in the way that we had experienced and hoped that they would be fulfilled. We're familiar with these feelings of disillusionment, of heartbreak, even anger and depression that Sarai and Abram must have felt. And we too have taken it upon ourselves to resolve or taken steps to bring about what we feel would be a positive resolution for our situations. We have even prayed about it and still acted. Maybe we do this because deep down we believe that God isn't going to act for us. Maybe it's because we don't trust that God sees us as important enough to offer a solution or an answer to our situation sometimes. 12 long years after that initial promise, when they left home, there was continued barrenness and absolutely no hint of a child in sight. And then all of a sudden, Abram receives another statement of God's covenant to make him the father of many nations. And his offspring would be as numerous as those stars that he stares at. And he says, when, God? When will this happen? In her own frustration and heartbreak, Sarai took it upon herself to get the fulfillment of this dream started. She said, enough's enough, 12 years, my patience is done, God. We're going to change things starting today. And she felt that the only way for Abram to have a child of his own was for her to give him one through one of her maidservants a female slave named Hagar, as his second wife. She was willing to share the most intimate parts of her relationship with Abram for him, for them, to have an heir and to start a family. Hagar fortunately conceives quickly and nine months later gives birth to a son. Abram named him Ishmael, as an angel tells Hagar to name him. And ta-da, dream fulfillment started, right? No. What do you mean, no? <sighs> well, Ishmael was about 13. So another 13 years passed. And Abram has a, another divine visit. And he learns that Ishmael is not the fulfillment of the covenant, the promise that God had made to him. God is adamant that the fulfillment would come through a son that his wife Sarai would have and deliver within one year's time. We're told in chapter 17, verse 17, that Abram falls over, literally falls on his face laughing in hysterics because this is the funniest thing he's heard because at this point, he's 99 years old and she's 89. So even if you cut that in half, she was kind of menopausal wasn't really likely she was going to conceive and you know other things that go with it not so easy to do so he's laughing oddly God doesn't have a problem with that and Higgs tells us that Sarai's continued childless state though made room for a miracle I mean God was not displeased with her as history and tradition would have said God intended to be glorified in her. I mean, think of that. You're childless for that long. Everybody else thinks that God doesn't care about you and doesn't want you. They don't know why your husband never set you aside. But now, God is going to use you 
to create a miracle. Barrenness becomes the arena of God's life-giving action. God told Abram not to get stuck on the limitations of their age, but to imagine the possibilities and to trust in God. God blesses him with a new name. He baptizes him as Abraham, which means father of many, to give him a reminder of the promise. And Abraham shows his trust by committing his own body and those of the men or males in his household through circumcision to this agreement with God, Mary Austin observes. So then not long after, it seems like, three divine visitors appear at the edges of Abraham and Sarah's encampment. Abraham runs to greet them and has Sarah prepare a meal of choice meats and fruits and fresh bread. And he serves them himself and he keeps them company as they eat. And they in turn ask about Sarah. And he says, oh, she's in the tent. And then they proceed to remind him of that promise. Once again, of God's promise, Sarah overhears the conversation. We don't know if this is the first time or not, but she's laughing to herself in the tent. And she says, I can imagine that she shakes her head in a bit of disbelief that this promise is still being lifted up after 25 years. I mean, come on. Why, God? Why are we still talking about this undeliverable, figuratively and literally, promise? She is definitely beyond childbearing years now, and there is no way humanly possible that she and Abraham will conceive and deliver a son, not in the the next year, not ever. The last 90 years have proven that to her. But wait, what is humanly impossible is absolutely possible with and for God, the angel reminds them. In one year's time, you will have a son. And you will name him Isaac, because God will rejoice with you on that day. And of course, one year later, Isaac is born. And Sarah's laughter and tears of joy baptize his upturned face as she cradles him against her breast. Abraham can finally see the fulfillment of God's promise roll out before his eyes with a son grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc., generation after generation, becoming great nations that God promised him. Isaac was the beginning of the bloodline that bursts Jesus into our world. Abraham begged God to not forget Ishmael, and God did not. God also blessed him with 12 sons that became 12 nations, and our sister faith tradition of Islam, or Muslim faith was brought to light through this line, each made possible because Abraham and Sarah heard and faithfully answered God's call, following a path into unknown territory and beginning a new life, a new family line and traditions where they settled. In Abraham and Sarah's story, there was joy, hope, and dreams that turned to heartache bitterness and disillusionment as her barrenness continued year after year, decade after decade. But after being pushed to her limit and being caught laughing at God's words, hope begins to creep in once again and eventually morphs into deep joy with Isaac's birth. Of course, that didn't mean that life was all happily ever after because we know this is not a fairy tale. We know that there are continued to be ups and downs with friction in that household. Hagar eventually leaves with Ishmael, returning to her homeland and making a life of their own there. They carry with them God's plan for Ishmael and they live into the future that it brings. Isaac marries a beautiful girl and the next generation of the golden promise arrives and it brings with it their own happiness and heartaches. The ups and downs of life with God continue. Each generation trusts God, but only to a certain point. They take actions of their own when God seems to have forgotten them. Some succeed and some fail. And eventually when it matters most, they come back to God and find contentment and joy. 
Each generation begins this cycle of faith all over again, right down to Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and beyond to each of us sitting here today. There are several things that we can learn from Abraham and Sarah's story. We can learn to accept and respond to God's call in our life when we hear it. Things may not always roll out the way that we think they should, but God can bring about good from any hot mess that we find ourselves in. Personal initiative is good, but it's better with God's guidance and with prayer. Action on our part is always part of the plan. Trust in God always, and things will work out eventually. Be patient. Remember, God's timing is very different than our own. Hopefully, our promises don't need 25 years to be fulfilled. But not everything will happen in our lifetime. Have you ever experienced something that you put into place, started, and it didn't come about until much later? Or know somebody else who did, and now you're reaping the rewards of what they started? Sometimes the end result, the fulfillment comes about after we're gone. So most importantly, friends, we are reminded once again that God and Christ promises to always love us and to be with us always, every moment of every time, through the good and the bad, and especially the bad. We are never left alone to struggle with the possibility of guidance and grace. In God's promise of steadfast and transformational love, we find that joy, laughter, peace, and hope are always possible. So may God fill your mouth with laughter, and may God always fill your heart with joy and love. May it be so. Amen. Let us bow our hearts and minds in prayer together today. God of our ancestors, you are the God of our future. You showed mercy to Hagar and Ishmael in the desert, just as you answered Sarah's laughter with Isaac's birth. We ask for your benevolence upon us. We pray that you heal the deathly divisions between all peoples of the earth today. We pray that the church of Jesus Christ will be so filled with the Holy Spirit, so committed to the head of the church that we will have Christ's mind among us. May the sword of the word pierce our hearts and give us compassion for a suffering world. We pray for world leaders and diplomats who seek to make a peace among nations. May their success be measured in generations who live from, free from fear of war. We pray for medical professions committed to healing, especially those in the areas of poverty or violence. May they be guided and guarded by the spirit who lifts up the brokenhearted and can even raise the dead. We pray for teachers, school staff and administrators and students, especially those in high risk communities. May they find strength in you to reach beyond themselves and so embrace the future with hope that you are holding for them. We pray for each other and for your promised kingdom to come when all wars will cease and there will be no disease when courageous faith, hope, and love cast out hatred, apathy, and poverty. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, we ask the Lord to send us out as laborers for the harvest. Let us, for, let us offer the gift of our lives to the Lord. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Good and holy God, for your steadfast love and faithfulness, we give you thanks and bless your name. Let our whole lives become songs of gratitude, joy, and praise, so that all the earth may know that we are your people and you are our God. Amen. Friends, the prayer that we should always hold in our hearts is, God, let your will be done, not mine. And that is one of the hardest prayers that we will ever live into. So my friends, go and proclaim the good news today. The kingdom of heaven has come near. May the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the Spirit's peace be with you now and always. Amen. Please be seated.
Every time we prepare to depart and leave this place, we always pause for that one last moment. And we remember that Jesus, every time he came into the presence, and especially every time he left those nearest and dearest, he offered each of them the amazing gift of God's peace. So may the peace of Christ be with each of you. Go in peace, have a blessed week, and I will see you soon. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Bye, everybody. Thank you.